we are going to take you on a wintry journey to old Minecraft. Marley was dead, there is no doubt about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker. Scrooge signed it. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Scrooge and Marley were partners for I don't know how many years. Scrooge was his sole executor, his sole administrator, his sole friend, and his sole mourner. Scrooge never painted out Old Marley's name. It stood there for years afterwards, above the warehouse door. Scrooge and Marley. The firm was known as Scrooge and Marley. Scrooge answered to both names. He was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone with Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. The cold within him froze his old features, nipped his pointed nose, shriveled his cheek, stiffened his gait, made his eyes red, his thin lips blue. He carried his own low temperature always about him. He iced his office in the dog days and didn't thaw it one degree at Christmas. External heat and cold had little influence on Scrooge. No warmth could warm him. No wintry weather chill him. Nobody ever stopped him on the street to say, My dear Scrooge, how are you? My dear Scrooge, when will you come to visit? Nor beggars implored him to bestow a trifle. Please, sir, spare a piece of gold. Nor childrens or adults alike asked him any questions, like the time, or inquired the way to such and such. Even the blind man's dog appeared to know him, and when they saw Scrooge coming, they would tug their owners into the doorways. They would wag their tails as if saying, Ruff! Why, it all is better than an evil eye, Dark Master. Ruff! But what did Scrooge care? It was the very thing he liked, to edge his way along the crowded paths of life, warning all human sympathy to keep its distance. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Not to save you. Bah! Humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come then. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Bah! Humbug. Don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be? When I live in a world of fools as this, Merry Christmas, out upon Merry Christmas, what's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money, a time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer? If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart, he should. Uncle! Nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone. Much good it may do you, much good it has ever done you. I'm sure I've always thought of Christmas time as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of, when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely. And therefore, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good, and will do me good, and I say notch bless it. Let me hear another sound from you, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go to Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Good afternoon. I am sorry, with all my heart, to find you so resolute. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon.
At this festive season of the year, Mr Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we make some slight provision for the poor and destitute, who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. And the Union workhouses, are they still in operation? They are, still I wish I could say they are not. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigour then? Both very busy, sir. Ah, oh, I was afraid, from what you said at first, that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. I am very glad to hear it. Under the impression that the scarcely furnished Mojang's cheer of mind or body, a few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink, and means of warmth. We choose this time because it is a time, of all others, when, we, when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to remain anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I don't want to make merry at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support the prisons and the workhouses. They cost enough. Those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it. Besides, it's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business, and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Not rest you merry gentlemen, may nothing you dismay. Go on, get here, go on. Ah, I'm back. You'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose. If quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I was to stop a piece of gold for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. And yet you don't think of me ill-used, when I have day's wages for no work. Christmas comes but once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier next morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> 